It's our weekly edition of Believe It or Not, starting with the announcement we've waited for for months on an issue Trump spent a lot of time talking about on the campaign trail, the nation's opioid crisis. Here he is back in August. The opioid crisis is an emergency, and I'm saying officially right now, it is an emergency. It's a national emergency. Then last week, he promised action was coming. We're going to have a major announcement probably next week on the drug crisis and on the opioid massive problem. And then again yesterday. Declaring a national emergency, which gives us power to do things that you can't do right now. But then today came a slightly different declaration. Effective today, my administration is officially declaring the opioid crisis a national public health emergency under federal law. Note he said national public health emergency there, not national emergency alone. And the difference is much more than just a word. While the national emergency declaration would have quickly released federal funding, the public health designation is a more measured approach, which lets some existing grant money go toward fighting and treating opioid abuse. And it has to be renewed every 90 days. So is this enough? Is something better than nothing? Joining me are Tina Opie. She's an assistant professor at Babson College. Tina, it's good to see you again. You Jennifer Nassour, former chair of the state Republican Party. It's good to see you, good too. To see you. Tina, let me start with you. 77 days since the president first said that national emergency, national emergency, as I said, now something less, which means no immediate federal dollars. What I don't get is this is the least partisan issue in America. Exactly. Everybody wants to fight. Why didn't he just go for it? I don't know. I don't get it. Because as you're right, Jim. The values that we all hold, I think, as American people is that we need to figure out how to solve this opioid crisis. And I'm really surprised that our president did not go full-fledged, full-throttle into figuring out how we can resolve this. So I'm, re I'm really disappointed in his decision. Well, you know, let's hear from a couple of people locally, Jennifer, before I get your two cents. First, here is uh, the attorney general commenting in advance in mm -hmm. expectation of this on our radio show today, Boston Public Radio. Here's Maura Healy. We need help from the federal government, and we need leadership from the federal government. And once again, I think this demonstrates that this is a president who is in over his head. He lacks the competence uh, to, to, to be able to organize these federal agencies to get things done. And uh, any announcement that isn't going to come without billions of dollars behind it for this public health crisis is going to be woefully inadequate. And even though uh, the gov our governor serves on the Opioid Commission that made a recommendation for a national emergency, uh, the governor issued a statement just literally minutes before the show saying strong step in the right direction. But Jennifer, he carefully says, urges the White House and Congress to fully fund and implement the recommended provision mm -hmm. treatment recovery proposals. Here's my analysis, which I have no basis for except common sense. <laughs> Charlie Baker said, I can't trash this guy for everything. He at least did something. We're headed in the right direction. Yes. Let's encourage him to go the whole nine yards. Is that what Baker is saying? So, uh, yes, I think so. And I think I'm going to give Donald Trump a, a kind of a, um, a a little bit of a compliment mm. here. You know, when he says it's a national emergency, I'm sure he read the briefing and saw public health emergency and he kind of said it's a national emergency and made a bigger deal out of earlier on earlier Ooh. on because that's his style. He makes a bigger deal out of things than they actually right. are. If you look at this, though, it, it kind of goes within Republican principles of spending. Right. So he wants to help this issue. He's actually already spent a almost a billion dollars on this issue between money for recovery why is this different from a hurricane? Yeah. Why is this hurricane money yeah. is released almost like because this? This, this crisis no is not this, as bad as that? This has no end. It's not, it's not that it's not as bad as a hurricane. A hurricane, once you fix the communities that have been harmed, then you can pull out of there. In this situation, it's just getting worse. The opioid problem is only getting worse. And so getting... to leave un, unrestricted funds forever Tina. is a lot. Yeah, I'm just gonna, if it's getting worse, why not put all of your full effort and energy behind it right now so that it doesn't get worse? Well, I don't think that that's, I don't think he's not doing that. This I has think, to be renewed every 90 days other than a national emergency. You know, so it's this like thing a, he declared it's a, today. Right. And so he's, but sort of it's already approach. been a billion dollars since April that he's put into these programs. So I think that he's going to continue. He's definitely made a commitment and he has people like the governor on this committee and the worst hit areas are New England, Appalachia. So I mean, yeah. if the, 
we know Everybody what it's said. like. Republicans, Every, Democrats, everybody. rich, poor, Black, white, yes. everybody. Poor, yes. In any case, let's move from Washington to Puerto Rico. As you know, mm. five weeks ago since Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, 75% of the island is still without power. The vast majority of kids not in school. But the company chosen to get everybody back online with a $300 million no-bid federal contact is just two years old, has two full-time workers, yeah. two Whitefish Energy, it's called, by the way, is backed by an investment company whose founder has given thousands to Trump and Rick Perry, who's now the energy secretary. And Whitefish's founder comes from the same small town as the interior secretary. They say it's a, a coincidence. Two employees, the largest contract they ever had before the $300 million with the federal government was $1.3 million. They're hiring supervisors at $462 an hour. Mm -hmm. If a Democrat did this, what would you be saying? Well, I would love to go back and see if there has anything been done like this. An entire island was wiped out. There is, like you said, there are kids that are not back to school. 80% of the island doesn't have power. I mean, people don't have food. People are two dying. Two employees they, now, they had on the day the hurricane like, hit. And two, then now they have, two. and then they were, because that's actually what they do. That's that's not so far from the standard. They have a very small group, and then they hire, they hire two or 300 people. Yeah, but they're bigger firms that have experience. That don't and by the way, lawyers get paid four, five, six. Six hundred dollars an hour. I mean, why can't these people who are going into so recovery? She's okay with it. Yeah, you? I think there's something fishy about white fish. Pardon the fun. But I'm <laughs> one fish, two yeah, fish, exactly. red fish, white because fish. Because exactly. you know, I'm a business professor, and, yeah. and we teach our students that when you make a decision about who you're going to give business to, you need to look at how viable they are. And you cannot. This company has not. I mean, they have a three hundred million dollar contract. Now, come on. Would you trust someone who'd only built a patio to build your whole house? Wait I don't a second. Think you would. Yeah, it just occurred to me. They have two employees. There are three of us here. We, we should bid for the contract. Yeah. Hey, Let's do it. You're no longer on business. Exactly. On business. <laughs> Come on, Jennifer. <laughs> Can we move to a much more sensitive thing? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's more sensitive. And the reason we're doing this, we promise people deficit hawks to deficit yeah. lambs. But you two really got into it a couple of minutes ago before we started about accusations of actually uh, sexual assault, is mm -hmm. what the actress said, uh, from uh, George H.W. Bush, Bush the Elder. He's 93 yeah. now. When it happened, I think he was 89 years old. He touched me from behind from his wheelchair with his wife, Barbara Bush, by his side. He told me a dirty joke, and then all the while being photographed, touched me again on the behind, uh, I should say. Uh, and then there's a quote from uh, the spokesperson for the former president. President Bush would never, under any circumstances, intentionally cause anyone distress. He most seriously apologized as if his attempt at humor offended Ms. Lynn. Mm. And uh, they go on to say, Barbara rolled her eyes as if to, Barbara meaning his wife, as if to say, not uh, again. Does he get a pass for this? A lot of women, by the way, who are really serious in this Me Too thing big time, I've been on Twitter afternoon, mm -hmm. are saying, give the guy a pass. Does he deserve one? I think he gets a pass. I Why? think because he's in a wheelchair. He's been in a wheelchair for five years. I think if he's taking a picture and his arm slips, uh, this, it no, they're not four, suggesting it was unintentional, it happened, Jennifer. They're saying this is what he and does. And it happened four years he ago. And this, this is a actress who didn't get any attention through the Weinstein thing. She's looking for attention now. She saw his picture on TV and thought, oh, this is great. I have the picture to prove it. Pro saying that Mrs. Bush was rolling her eyes, that's totally not, that's hearsay. I mean, that's, okay that's her if, if it was an 89-year-old, do you think I would be offended if an 89-year-old touched my Rear end. I mean, I would be okay. How about you? <laughs> I don't, so I think we need to know more facts. If it was, in fact, as Jennifer said, just you know, he lacks muscle control and his hand slipped. No, they're not. Even his spokesperson is not right. suggesting okay. it was a slip. I don't think he gets a pass, and it's not because. He is a Republican or because he's white or because he's a man. It's because if this was any situation, any other person, I don't think we would be OK with this. It's not OK for a man to physically touch another part of a woman's uh, her butt. It's just not OK. Is it because of who he is? I mean, we were talking about it in the studio beforehand and people, one of uh, one of our my colleagues here was suggesting. So, Jim, do you get a pass if you're 90? What's the age cutoff? Yeah. Is it about age? Is it about the stature of this man? What no. is it that causes it, you to say it's OK? No. And is it because he's in a wheelchair? Because you no, did say that. I think if it was my great, gr my my grandfather-in-law who is ninety years old, I would feel the same way. He's just an older man. So it's man. age. It's not. Is I it think the wheelchair? It's just age. What I if O'Reilly was in a wheelchair? O'Reilly, I'd slap in the face. Okay. But why? What's the difference? To because me, because I think it's just age, and they were from a very different generation where they, you cannot now. It's whether it was intentional or not. I just don't think that at that point it's 
what are you going to do? You're going to go throw him, you know, go sue him because well, that he's might, well, so at that age and he did something? Let's separate the two just, things, though, right? We're talking about the consequences. Now, let's just talk about the actual behavior and how we characterize it. He touched her intentionally on her butt. I don't care if he's 89 or 8. or eight, Well, 8 is a little bit different because we got to work through that. But 18 and up, right? Seriously, I think we, we laugh about it, but I think the reason why sexual harassment and this sort of culture where it's okay to objectify women continues is because we start to give people a pass, which means the law doesn't apply to you once you're over a certain age. Can I just kind of say something here? You know, the, um, the only plus out of this thing, because regardless of what side you're on, this is a pretty distinguished yeah. man who's done a lot of good things in his lifetime. And, I and you hate to see him in the middle of this, but I mean, he did what he did. Well, what's the sexual but, harassment here? What, what, what exactly is the she sexual harassment? She said, she, well, she technically, she didn't like technically the is an assault. She, he touched her with without permission. I'm not taking any side. Yeah, I'm just saying technically it is a sexual together. assault by definition. But I was about to say the only plus I can see out of this, regardless who's right, Mark Halpern today, oh, George H.W. Bush today, yeah. and a Halpern thing is disgusting. There's yeah. no debate about it. It's nauseating uh, a, a kind of thing. But it seems to me the more this percolates into new disclosures almost every day, right. the longer, the lo greater the likelihood is this thing has a shelf life and it's not just two or three weeks and done, but actually we may get somewhere. Is that okay. realistic so, or no? So look, I, as a woman in at, at the age group that I'm Whatever in, you're in <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm, I'm going to say that every single woman in my, that I know is a, has, me too. Has, is a me too. That means we should throw out everyone in our state in our state legislators, we should throw out Whoa, everyone in our members of every member of Congress, everyone. You're more forgiving than you. So Sorry. you're saying because it's pervasive, we shouldn't do anything, anything about no, it. No, I'm saying because, that no, because abs he's absolutely older, not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that you can't say that. Oh well, all these stories are coming out. These are not isolated incidents. Definitely, these not. I agree. are things that have happened for generations. And the only way to stop it is by women going and saying to younger women, "Hey, by the way, if." this happens to you, don't wait four years. Jennifer, and the only way to stop it is for men to act asset. responsibly. Yeah, that's what I would say. For mothers to train because, their sons because and for maybe women get the last to, word quickly. Yeah, so I, I guess what I'd say here is we, we have to think about what would you say to your daughter? If someone sexually harassed her and she waited four years, say it's her, 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 her boss, she waited four years, would you question her story or would you say, thank you for coming forward, now let's go address the male or whoever did this Ten offensive seconds. behavior? I would say to her, you need to tell me immediately. You need to talk about it immediately. When you wait, you're part doesn't? of the problem. You're part of the problem. Wow. Okay, if you're okay. dying to hear about deficit reduction, you'll have to wait a week. Nice to see you, Tina. Thank you so much. Great to see you, Jennifer. See you. Thanks. Really appreciate your time.